What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Unsportsmanlike Conduct. I'm joined by my man, Frank. Frank, how are you? Good. I'm good, everybody. Everybody is excited for this weekend because, Frank, it's finally here. It's championship weekend. In a weird way, I'm almost more excited for this than the Super Bowl, which I can't speak to because it's not Super Bowl time yet, but it's so cool. I feel like we get two Super Bowl hyped up games because they're going to be awesome matchups. Yeah, they're definitely two, like, really, they should be two really, really good games, hopefully. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, we'll take a look at both of them uh, right now in a second, but to me, the quarterbacks are obviously the story. As of right now, Mahomes hasn't been ruled out, so we're ruling him in. He's playing. That's what we're going off of. Um, yeah, I don't think there's, there's really, I feel like there's sorry, no way in hell. But, I feel like there's no way in hell Mahomes is not going to play, so... <laughs> Right, yeah, he's definitely uh, guaranteed in. Um, already, I think he passed uh, a couple phases of protocol for the concussion stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so obviously, and the first game of the weekend isn't the Mahomes game. I heard that they usually switch them up. So because last year, the NFC had the night game for the championship weekend. This year, the AFC gets the night game. But we'll start with the NFC because that's the first game on the slate on Sunday. It's kind of the marquee matchup as far as like experienced quarterback goes. Uh, obviously, we just had Brady and Breeze. Now we have Brady and Rodgers. I feel like it can't get better than that. This line opened up with Green Bay favored by three and a half and the over under at 51. It's in Lambeau. It's going to be cold. What What are you looking for? How are you feeling about this matchup? Uh, I mean, honestly, this matchup is going to be, I think, this will probably be the I think the best one out of the two games and I hope so because Rodgers against Brady it should just be a, a really fun game to watch and also you got the uh, the top two best offenses in the league one two right there they're both one two in offense so I mean they're both very like explosive Aaron Rodgers just loves to let that ball fly and Brady he's not obviously scared to do whatever it is he wanted he wants to do because I guess Bruce Arians went out and said that now He's letting Brady call coaching coaching plays, and he's basically letting him coach the game half the time. <laughs> yeah, so um, like you said, with the offenses being so high-powered, I'm trying to look at the defenses because I'm thinking whichever defense steps up is going to obviously be the deciding factor here. Turnovers would be huge in this game, mm -hmm. and almost – with that being said, I almost feel like the running game is important to keep the other quarterback off the field. Uh, and more so, almost in my opinion, for the Bucks, who are the underdogs in this game, because if they can use Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette and run the football, keep Aaron Rodgers off the field, uh, limit the drives that Aaron Rodgers has, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think that would be crucial. And I almost feel like that would be Bruce Arians' game plan in a way. Use uh, Brady when you have to but kind of relying more on the running game. And it's funny because the Bucs didn't really run the ball in the beginning of the season, but lately, like especially last weekend, they, they did well uh, in the run against the Saints. So do you think that's something that we could see from Tampa Bay? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like, like you said, that uh, you didn't see Tampa Bay really running the ball throughout the whole season. Like they rank in, uh, in a percentage of plays that they call for the run. They ranked almost dead last. They ranked 28th in the NFL with yeah. calling run plays. So they they don't run the ball much, obviously. When you got Brady back there, you want to just sling it. Now, when it comes to defenses like you are just talking about, the funny thing about this is not a lot of people probably know this, but the Tampa Bay rush defense is number one in every single category. They yeah, are number one in every single category for rush defense. They are number one in the NFL. They're in every single category for rush defense. Now they're not missing one that they're not number one in the NFL at. So that's it's a pretty big defensive thing that they got that, that I really didn't even really was paying that much attention to until I found that out actually last week before they played the Saints. But uh, it's they, they have a lights out front that just stop the run no matter what they try to do. Nobody can run the ball on them, and that's a big that's a big game plan with Green Bay. They like to run the ball with Aaron Jones a lot and they like to you know get him going and then that feeds the play action with with uh, Rodgers so I, I don't I don't know how they're gonna how yeah, to work around that they're gonna have to be doing some Rodgers gonna have to pull out some magic easily yeah definitely that's huge and also considering the fact that it's in Lambeau it's in January so it's cold and so you know you don't want 
even though it's Aaron Rodgers, I feel like you don't want him slinging it, you know, 40, 45 times to this ball game. You you rather be able to have your balanced offense. And if Tampa Bay is able to shut down the running game from the Packers, that could be the huge that stat that you just gave, which is a lot of stats essentially, because all running uh they, they lead the league in, in running rush defense all over the place. So that's huge. Uh, I really yeah. think that's actually a very like uh, overlooked stat, especially going, like I said, into this game where usually when it's cold weather, you want to establish the run, um, you know, keep your quarterback, you know, clean and, then, and not really having to sling it. Also, if you flip it to the to the other side too, Green Bay's rush defense, like you said, if Tampa Bay really is going to focus on maybe they could get the ball, they can run the ball a bit. Green Bay's defense rushing wise is not that bad as well. They rank in the top 10 in most of the categories, but as in yards per rush, they rank 22nd. They give almost five yards per handoff. They almost give up five yards per carry. So that's that's one of their their down slopes for, for rush defense. So that's something that maybe Tampa Bay really can exploit. Yeah, we'll definitely have to keep our eye on that. Like I said, I mean, Oh, everything you just said is money right there because that is essentially what I think Tampa's game plan is going to be. Aaron Rodgers is the MVP this year, pretty much. He's been slinging it. He has all these touchdowns. Devontae Adams had like 19 in the regular season. So, mm -hmm. you know, the passing game is their strength. But if that's what you can limit them to and keep Aaron Jones, because Aaron Jones is a fine running back. You know, I think that's really where Green Bay has to two seasons or so has been really good because of that because they have finally in a, a running game where it's not all on the shoulders or shoulder of Aaron Rodgers and so yeah. if they shut down Aaron Jones and it becomes a passing you know Aaron Rodgers has been good for the past 10 years and you know it's been because the offense is one dimensional dimensional so if Tampa if that's their game plan run the football keep Aaron Rodgers off the field get a lead establish the run not rely solely on Brady and make Green Bay rely solely on Aaron Rodgers, that mm -hmm. might be the winning formula. And so, I, you know, it's just super exciting. That, that game, like you said, I'm so excited. I almost feel like this will be the better game. This yeah, because like, game. now if we transition and go to like passing, now we talk about passing, we we're just talking about rushing. So now let's go to passing wise. Tampa Bay is second in the NFL in passing yards per game because, and that's not a surprise because they pass the ball probably their top five and the most passing plays that they run. So they are second in the league in passing yards per game. Now defensively, Green Bay, their secondary is actually pretty good and they're, they're in the top 10. They rank seventh in what they allow per game passing yards wise. So, I mean, Green Bay's defense is actually, they line up pretty good against this uh this tampa bay offense even though tampa bay's got a lot of weapons now here's the problem with this now so now you go to green bay for passing wise they're in the top 10 with passing yards per game obviously with aaron Rodgers. but defensively tampa bay's secondary is very suspect they rank 21st in the league in in what they give up per game so they're they're a little bit suspect they're secondary so aaron Rodgers is gonna have definitely his his opportunities he's gonna have he's gonna be able to to maybe shred that secondary if that secondary can't step up or if the weather doesn't affect that somehow so it's a tough game because you got a cancellation out on one side with green bay probably can't run the ball then you have a cancellation out a little bit of tampa bay not really being able to pass the ball as good as they did all season because they're going against a, a good secondary in green bay so this is a cold. very tight game. This is one of those games where I think it's like a it's a 50-50 game again. Yeah, I mean, and the line reflects that. Obviously, it started off Green Bay favored by three and a half. Now it's down to a field goal game. So, I mean, I agree. This will be this will come down to the wire. And uh, man, I'm pumped. I'd love to see that. I know. <laughs> so um, we'll move on to the next matchup, which now we shift gears to the AFC. Obviously, the question there, it's the Bills and the Chiefs. Will Mahomes play? Like I said, we're going off of him. Assuming he's playing, this is in Arrowhead. This is the, the evening game. I feel like the Bills are playing with house money. Um, and But as you saw last weekend, it's almost like the Chiefs are too because they just won the Super Bowl. They're going for it on fourth and inches. Uh, so I do think that this right now is started off and this remains a field goal game. Kansas City is favored by a field goal. So the line also reflects Mahomes playing. Now mm -hmm. the over under started at 55. It's down to 54. Um, and, you know, they're expecting a pretty high scoring game. 
And it's kind of, it's just crazy. We have four great offenses in this weekend's matchups. And it's really, you know, they always say defense wins championships. And that's the same thing in this game for me. I'm like, which defense is going to step up? And I happen yeah. to trust the Kansas City defense more. Obviously, they won the Super Bowl last year. And I just feel like they have more playmakers. And, you know, even the teams that they've played when they've needed to step up, I feel like they have. Last week, Cleveland had a chance to drive down the field and take the lead on them. And the defense held up, forced them to punt. So, you know, I don't know. I, I think maybe people are reacting to Buffalo's success. But I this one seems like the easier pick for me because I think Kansas City is is the better team. Mm -hmm. Now, like you, you were just saying about like how the offenses in these four these four teams that are left, it's funny because four out of the five top offenses in the whole entire league are these four teams. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's funny. You got the absolute best offenses that are out there. The last four are the best offenses. Now, this game is defensively a little suspect because Buffalo can be a little suspect on D and we already know Kansas City can definitely be suspect on D as well so we don't have two great defenses in this game but we do have two great offenses that definitely you know Mahomes and Allen they both love to just sling the ball so this this is going to be I think also this should be a fun game to watch too so both of these games are going to be fun to watch I think but I kind of agree with you this game is not the 50-50 game I think I think Buffalo is, is you know, yes, they have been a great all-around team. They have, but this is the biggest test, obviously, mm -hmm. going against the Super Bowl champs here. So this is going to be Buffalo's biggest th – this this is it right here. If Buffalo could win this game, they have a legitimate shot at actually winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. So this is going to be – seriously now. Yeah, I. Well, the point I was going to make is if you look at their playoff wins, uh, you know, beating the Colts – their defense did not look that great, yeah. you know? And remember, the Colts had also a fourth and goal that they went for and didn't get it. And they gave up 24 points. Um, and that, like I said, that could have easily been 31 points to a Colts offense that was reliant on Phillip Rivers, who's now retired. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, he announced he's retiring. And so he was, you know, that's not as great of an offense as the Chiefs and so that's why I'm just kind of not sure about this Buffalo defense and then their next game is Lamar and the Ravens and everyone I mean I think the Ravens got too much credit almost for that win they had in Tennessee I mean the Tennessee defense was suspect all season long yeah. and the Ravens won by putting up 20 points and people were like Lamar is back <laughs> and you know we've seen this with Lamar like I'm happy for the kid he got his win but like you've said this before, the Ravens are one dimensional pretty much with Lamar. It is. And that's like this what is happens. a passing league if you're a quarterback. So it's like look take a look at all these quarterbacks yeah. that are left. They're all pocket passers, basically. <laughs> yeah, and, and also even the weapons that Lamar had, I mean, Des Bryant kind of washed up. Hollywood Brown is really the only receiver, but he's not as, you know, I wouldn't compare him to Tyreek Hill, for example. Yeah. And you know, that's not, like I said, that's not the weapons that you have. I mean, you think about what Kansas City has, you know, Travis Kelsey is a legitimate top five, probably top three tight end in the league. Whereas Mark Andrews on the Ravens, I was like, you know, he, I don't think he's that much. Mm -hmm. And so again, I just, this is where the Bills defense, if they are for real and people are giving them credit for like holding the Ravens to three points. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that was that impressive. I don't, I don't think so either. Like you said, that's, that's you know, I, I feel like both of these teams, honestly, Kansas City and Buffalo, haven't really been tested at all in these playoffs. Either one of them, I feel like, have really been like a solid test of where they, you know, like there's some controversy of like if they're going to win this game or not. I mean, Buffalo, I always thought Buffalo was going to beat the Ravens anyway. That's why it's just the Ravens were not that good this year. They were a bit of a disappointment. Now, when it comes to this game, like I said, this is going to be a huge test for Buffalo. Now, Kansas City is, is they haven't been tested in the playoffs, but that's just because they're so damn good that there's really nobody that they, they had there's nobody to stack up against game. them. So it's like, you know, who do you who do you stack up against these guys? I mean, they got like so many weapons offensively that it's just crazy. You got arguably the best quarterback in the league that's behind it all. So it's like, what do you, what do you do here now? When it goes to uh, like stat wise with these guys like 
neither of these teams really love to run the ball again. These are two teams that don't like to really run the ball. They're both bottom 10 in the league in, in rushing plays that they call. So it's like, this is going to be another one of those games where they're just going to want to sling it both ways. Both ways are going to, Mahomes and Allen are both going to try to let this fly. And being that the Bills' real weapon offensively, Stephon Diggs, I feel like they're going to very zone in on trying to stop Stephon Diggs, like specifically. Yeah. So, other than Stephon Diggs, I mean, where else is Allen going to go? Because Allen's favorite target is Stephon Diggs. And I could feel them double covering Stephon Diggs and Allen trying to force stuff left and right, try to get Stephon open and try to just force balls in there left and right to him. So, I don't know. I, I think, honestly, I feel like this is just, I feel like Buffalo is overmatched in this game. See, I feel the exact same way. And, I mean, I hope you picked this up. You might have not picked this up. And I hope I'm remembering correctly. I think at one point in that Ravens Bills game, the Bills had like 15 passes to one run. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it was something super lopsided because I was like, what? And it was a close game at that point. Like, I think. It yeah, was they were just calling three three all pass plays. I, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So it is one of those things where, like I said, like you said, you know, if it's not Diggs, obviously Cole Beasley, and he was kind of banged up last week. I heard reports where it was like, you know, he probably wasn't going to play the first playoff games and all the, the play, first playoff game. And they were like helping him up after every hit and everything. So I, I agree. I just think that the Bills are overmatched. So, you know, in Kansas City, it's just Kansas City. If you think about when they had Mahomes in there against the Browns, it was a 19 to 3 game. And even yeah. having it be a 19 to 3 game, they the Chiefs left points on the board out there. And so, sure, the Browns made it a game and everything. But you know, at the same time, I think with Mahomes, this is just, you know, it's, they're just, like, like you said, and I agree, they're just overmatched. So I don't expect this one. To, I wouldn't be surprised if this is, you know, Chiefs winning by more than 10 points, to be honest. Yeah, like, and that's what's funny is, like, I, I feel the same way with you. Like, I feel like the line on this game should be, like, Kansas City minus six and a half or seven. And it's yeah, only a I, three. I, I, <laughs> I know. Even, yeah, I, it's very weird. Well, you know, I mean, the sports books seem to always know something. So, but, uh, you know, yeah, you that's what I'm saying. It's, it's just very suspect for the way that this number is at because it's like I said, I don't see it being, I, I don't see a three point, I don't see a 50 50 matchup. Like, this is the same point spread as Rodgers versus Brady, which is a very evenly matched game, where I don't see this as really an evenly matched game because I see experience wise, Buffalo's got zero experience. So, that take that right off the board they got no experience of where they're at they're on borrowed time right now they're just winging it basically <laughs> and thinking that you guys gonna be able to wing it i don't think and go against kansas city i mean it's just not gonna happen i don't think you can wing it go against in kansas city and then think you're gonna get a win there as well and arguably you all your weapon your weapon is is stefan diggs your running backs are non-existent you don't even use them really and I mean, they just I, I don't know. Dante flip, the, flip the script there. You got Tyree Kill. You got Hardman. You got Le'Veon Bell. You got Mahomes. You got Kelsey. I mean, goddamn, they got literally almost the. They almost got arguably best players in every position. So it's like, I don't know. I feel way overmatched matchup here. So we'll see what happens though. I don't know because you know a lot of weird shit has happened in the NFL this year. So I, I don't. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, like you said though. If Mahomes didn't go out of that Browns game, that probably would have been a massacre, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. So, and it's not like, you know, the Browns also got to score more because the Chiefs weren't moving the ball like they would with Mahomes. So, time yeah, off exactly. the clock, all of that. So, the one thing I will say that I think it's weird because obviously it's this weird COVID time. We got so weird to there not being fans. And if you've noticed, now, this shit's packed almost. Like, I, I like the Chiefs. The last game, I don't know what percent of fans they had really, but it looked like now the crowd could make an impact. In the yeah. Buffalo game against the Ravens, the Ravens were like false starting like three plays in a row, <laughs> and even the announcers were saying like the, these fans here are making a difference. Yeah. So we're almost forgetting that. So now it's almost like we have to re get used to, and obviously not at a hundred percent, but there's fans out there. This Chiefs game is gonna have fans out there. Yeah, I mean, you can you it's can hear just like to play. Tony Romo. I mean, when he was talking, when Tony Romo was talking, it sounded like he was goddamn. It was a hundred thousand fans around him screaming while he was talking. 
So yeah, yeah. I mean, it obviously is making a difference. <laughs> Yeah, I know we were making fun of that because he just sounds like he's yelling behind the crowd and trying to be heard like a hundred people away. But I mean, yeah, so that's another thing. I just think everything lines up Chiefs. So, I mean, and you know, we'll see. But all right, so let's do something fun here. Let's obviously we have those four teams. Who is your dream matchup as a fan? Leave gambling, all that stuff aside. What would you be? What, what do you want to see? I I want to see the Bucks against the Chiefs. I want to see... The goat. I want to see the goat against the ba- the mas- basically the passing of the torch to another goat that's going to probably eventually be where he's at. <laughs> Damn it, Frank! We're losing viewership because we agree too much. Because that is my dream matchup. I obviously I'm biased. I'm a Vikings fan, and I'll give respect where it's due. I mean, respectfully, I think the Packers are the best team still around yeah. right now. Out of the four, I do think that they're the most complete team. But God, I don't want to see Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl. So I 100% am hoping for Brady to just destroy them. <laughs> I'm like, that would be the best. So my dream matchup is definitely Brady in the Super Bowl. And like you said, Mahomes, because I just, Mahomes is like, you know, there's like man crush Monday. He's as a quarterback, he's like my quarterback crush every day. Yeah. The dude is professional. The dude is like well-spoken. He, I mean, if your daughter, I mean, you have a daughter, so maybe I said the analogy. Yeah, you, but if my if I had a daughter and she wanted to date one of these quarterbacks, Mahomes is the guy. Like I trust him. <laughs> good kid, um, obviously, playmaker, a hundred percent. So he is the dream quarterback in my head. So to me, I would love to see Brady and Mahomes. And because at that point, I like honestly, at that point, whoever wins, I'd be happy. You know, yeah. like. At that point, if Mahomes wins the second Super Bowl, I'm happy for the kid. He deserves it. He's the best quarterback in the league. And if Brady wins it, I'm witnessing history over here. I know. Like, Brady be getting wheeled out in a wheelchair. Dude, that would be be crazy. That's like, and like you said, it is exactly that. It's like goat meets baby goat. So that would be the dream matchup. For me, now if I flip it, the worst matchup is obviously the opposite, which I'm sure you'll agree with because Packers, don't want to see them in there. And then yeah. with the Bills, like, God, I love Stephon Diggs, but there's that, like, you know, like, that uh, that little, like, uh, like chip on the shoulder, leaving Minnesota, and I'm a Vikings mm-hmm. fan, and so I'm kind of like, he's right about the Vikings needing this offense. But yeah. I'm like, all right, you proved your point, and now I don't want him to, like, be celebrating over there, like, <laughs> making out with Josh Allen. Like, (laughs) you know, just shitting on Kirk Cousins and how, like, the chemistry was bad there. So I just I I just could care less to see that that type of matchup. Honestly, I just I could care less for the Packers and I could care less for the Bills. I mean, the Bills were they're they're a cool story. Yeah, they're a cool story that they like, you know, are coming out of the AFC and then they they're they're playing very well and everything like that. And it's a cool story, but it's like it doesn't really bring that much hype as like goat versus baby goat. So, I mean, (laughs) It's just yeah, I like, guess. yep, okay, in the Super Bowl, we see Josh Allen going against Aaron Rodgers. Okay, Aaron Rodgers is, yep, he's good. We all know that he's good. Not as good as Brady. And then let's go with Josh Allen. Josh Allen's decent. He's played well. But yeah. it's like, who gives a shit, really? I don't even care to watch that. I want to see, goddamn, I want to see, like, Brady just slinging it and letting it all go against Mahomes. And if Mahomes takes him out, yeah. Brady just turns around and walks out into the sunset, passes the torch onto Mahomes. It says, listen, this is your league now. <laughs> well, so uh, obviously I have this like thing with Diggs because he used to be on the Vikings. So, and if it was Packers, Bills, don't get me wrong. I'm rooting Bills 100%. Go Buffalo. And you know the storylines are going to be, this is could be their first ever championship because that franchise have never won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, you know, could Josh Allen Diggs do it? The Bills Mafia thing, which... If you haven't, I encourage you to check out some YouTube clips on the Bills Mafia. These people are nuts. Like, we watched some the other day, and they're like, girls are, like, drinking beer and, like, spitting into each other. It's disgusting. I wanted to bark. There's, like, a whole guy that gets trounced in ketchup and mustard, and it's disgusting. But, so, you know, those will be the storyline. So, obviously, that's why me, I want to see Mahomes and Brady for everything I just spoke about. But for you, you're a Patriots fan. Is there any of that animosity with Brady, or are you you're cool with it? I I honestly it makes me more that I was a New England fan and always was on Brady's back to see him 
win more because it's like then it proves that like he was what we thought that he was when he was in New England. Like he really right. was the story of being a two hundred like ninety ninth pick in the draft. And then getting you're just getting lucky that Bledsoe got hurt, and then he gets in, and then look now, like he goes and even goes to another team, and then takes that team to the Super Bowl too. So it's like, just shows that like he really is who like everybody thought he was in New England. It wasn't just Belichick. <laughs> yeah, for I, well, I mean, a hundred percent. So I like I said, I cannot wait for this weekend's matchups. Obviously, I'm super pumped. Um, and so we were, we were going to talk about this topic, but I wanted to ask you actually, now we, we got into talking about the fans. What, what, what percent do you think of fans will be at the Super Bowl? It's in Tampa. Oh, that's another storyline, by the way, that must be the first team. Hey, exactly. They'd be at Super home as well. Yeah. And <laughs> now, uh, we did like, I did a little bit of research on this a while ago because we were thinking about being at the Super Bowl and like, going to it, but, um, uh, I think they're allowing like 25% capacity for the Super Bowl is what what why I looked at this was like two months ago I believe so I haven't really updated it and looked now but about two months ago it said like 25% of the fans where they were gonna allow in there but now the problem is with that and with going is you have to buy it in like groups of six and and the minimum tick yeah you gotta buy in groups of six and the minimum tickets are like four grand three four five grand so like you're spending like twenty to thirty thousand dollars on like six tickets to go to the Super Bowl, because you gotta buy them in bulk now. So huh. it's like, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just weird with the with the COVID stuff. But honestly, if anybody has the thirty thousand just disposable, they don't even care. They just want to blow. It. I would definitely advise going to a, a sporting event during this COVID stuff because yeah. we went we went to the World Series and crazy. There was nobody even close to even near us. We got to see a World Series game, and there was nobody even close to us. Like it was like we rented out the whole stadium to watch World Series by ourselves. So I mean, it was like an awesome experience because you're not crunched and like next to people and like all close up to people or anything like that. Like you got the whole stadium to yourself basically. And I can imagine it still be the same way when it comes to like the Super Bowl. Like you're going to be spread out, so there's not going to be a whole bunch of people near you. So it's like yeah. it'll be. It's it's definitely fun to attend to do, but it's like. Hey, that's it's a costly package to go to the damn Super Bowl. <laughs> that's I mean, yeah, I, I, it's always I mean it's always been a costly package, but the fact that now it's got to be like multiple people is yeah. insane. Um, so well, so the topic that I was gonna bring up is because also there was I watched the herd, I enjoy the herd with Colin Coward. He brought up this point about uh, having if Mahomes isn't ready for Sunday, but he would be cleared by Monday moving that game which i mean i just like right before we started this i told you about this and we didn't talk about it but i know that we agree on it because i mean yeah what's your take that's honestly it's totally not fair there's no way in hell they should think right. do something like that yeah like you can't be like okay well hold on that's just like the brown saying well Tell Kansas City, let's wait about three or four months until Odell Beckham's knee is cool, and then yeah. we'll play. Then we'll play the playoff game. So it's like, no, there's no way. If your player, I don't care if they're a star player or not. It's just not fair. It's like, okay, you got to bring your backup in there. So I don't know what to tell you. Like, there's no way in hell they should reschedule a game like that. I mean, they kind of did this in the midseason with uh, it was Steelers against Ravens. Yeah. And Lamar, I, I don't, I, I forgot really what it was. I think it was Lamar. Lamar, Lamar was in the in the COVID nineteen like restriction zone or some shit like that was going on or whatever. They kept postponing the damn game for for the Steelers and the Ravens. They just kept postponing, postponing. Okay, we'll play Monday. Oh no, Tuesday. Uh, all right, let's try Wednesday. No, you know what? We're just gonna play next Sunday. And then the whole entire Raven squad was healthy <laughs> before they were, they were able to play the game again, which is just it was like totally not fair. It's like, well, you know, yeah. and it screwed over the Steelers because they ended up almost not having a bye week because yeah. it turned into a bye week, but they were preparing to play that weekend. It was just a mess. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that is one of these topics that obviously the COVID thing is still around. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure it's still happening, even though the presidents have switched, unless there's something I don't know about. Well, yeah, they just they COVID just put out stuff. breaking news right now. COVID was cured, so COVID was cured. <laughs> I think everybody's good. Um, 
<laughs> no, but so obviously this is something that teams commissioners are going to have to deal with. So if you were the commissioner, because it's it's happening in the NBA too, and so you know they're postponing games. I, with the NBA, they're postponing a lot of games, which. I don't know when they make these up based on the schedule. They did. They were smart about it. They only released half the season schedule, and then the second half of the season will be released later, which is for this. And I'm sure the playoffs, it'll be the same process. They'll probably allow a week in there for the makeup games. Yeah, which is smart, and you know they did it correctly. But uh, how do you think you would handle it as a commissioner? Let's say of the NBA. Um, and like I said, Adam Silver just has such a tough job. And I mean, I have my take, but I'll, I'll let you go first. Like, okay, so this is what I would do if I was commissioner. And let's say I would go rapid testing, obviously go rapid testing. Whoever tests positive for it has got to sit out. Whoever they were in, in, whoever they were with, if they were in next to each other or whatever, that gets tested as well. Whoever tests positive, like I said, whoever tests positive automatically is out of the game. The game don't need to be postponed, but the players need to sit out. So take the players out of the game. They automatically got to sit out until they test negative. As soon as they test negative, they can come back and play again. I would just say no postponement of any games and just take those players that are testing positive out of the game altogether, but then let the game still play on. So I know that would probably affect a lot of the way, like who wins the game, obviously, because sometimes if a star tests positive or whatever, and you got to take him out, I mean, it is what it is, but I think instead of postponing a whole entire game because maybe like two or three people or got sick, I don't really think that they should be doing that. I think they should just be taking the players in, as individuals and just to, removing them from the game. Well, and but that leads to the question, which lately recently happened with the Sixers. It's like, what if too many of your players are out? So the Sixers only had seven players available, but let's say yeah. they didn't even have seven. They only had five or four. What's your answer to that, Commissioner? Okay, so if, if I'm thinking if they got four, then we're, okay, we're gonna we're gonna reschedule the game because it, uh, if we got five, listen to me, you guys are NBA players, y'all should be conditioned. So I mean, we should get in there and run. I mean, <laughs> I'm that ours, I'm that asshole commissioner. I'm like, yeah. if you have four, you can play, or you can forfeit. <laughs> because to me, th this is the whole point. Like, obviously, there's this pandemic, there's this virus. So you know, you. There's protocol that the NBA has set up, and I know it sucks. And if I'm a player, like, this is horrible. But at the end of the day, it's like, well, do you want the job or not? Because this is the situation we're in. Like, this is why people like Kyrie have pissed me off lately, because it's like, yo, yeah. at least you have a job on the table. Yeah. So many people don't even have the option to get back to work. So, yes, sorry, it's not gonna be the same job that you've always had. That would be like someone in my industry creating a show at, well, let's say a casino and being like, but now you have to live in the casino. You can't live in the casino. Yeah. For me though, it's like, okay, now I need to decide, can I acclimate to this new job offer or not? And don't do it. But yeah, exactly. that's kind of part of the opt in or opt out situation. And that's why I think almost like from the beginning, it's a mistake in the sense of, because I'm one of those people that's like, Hey, what? Like, so where's the cutoff? You know, like, if you have, and I remember this once, Colin Sexton, the kid that's with the Cavs, do you remember that? I think it was like a four on five because too many guys fouled out in a college game. Yeah. And he almost won them the game. Yeah, um, he was still, yeah. So why should it balling. be any different? You're right. Why should it be so, any different I mean, here? It sucks. There's a disadvantage. And if you're worried about your players getting injured because they're playing all 48 minutes, that's fine. You forfeit the game because what that also does, it, it shows a seriousness to the players. Yeah. So the players are going to be like, damn, like we really can't break these this protocol that the league has set in place. Because if we do, it's starting to cost us W's. Yeah. And I know it's like the like asshole thing, but it's like, it's almost, and I mean, I wish that would happen or whatever, but that is like almost the only way where it's actually fair. Because... If you start postponing, like, I mean, it happened, you know, they postponed certain games. Like Jason Tatum has been out for the past like four games on <laughs> COVID protocol, but yeah. then there's other games that have been actually postponed. So I don't understand how, why is it that with Tatum being out, the Celtics are still playing and I don't like the Celtics, but I'm on like, you know, I'm bat batting for them here. 
There's well, no I mean, way. here's the thing with the Jason Tatum situation that I just thought was stupid. First off, I think the protocol shit that they all do is, is pretty much stupid that they put out because they're saying like no pregame handshakes, you can't do any of this shit, none of that. But yet they're rubbing on each other the whole entire goddamn game. Yeah. So look how the difference. I mean, I don't even see what the difference is with that. But then like the Jason Tatum issue. So Jason Tatum has to sit out. Then Bradley Beal had to sit out as well because he was involved like with Jason Tatum somehow. But yet Jason Tatum's teammates that he was playing with didn't have to sit out. Like they still could play. It's just I, I feel like it's a whole situation of just stupid shit that's like right. constantly happening and making it just look. It just makes you look stupid the way that handling it. I just think yeah. it's, it's it's dumb the way that it's being handled. And it just like, you know, should be very you know. simple. It should be like if you're sick, I'm gonna take you out, and you go and just like a regular time when anybody would get sick anytime you just take okay they're out they're gonna be sick send them home and, and let's carry on with what's going on yeah i mean because like the tatum thing you're 100 right after he said what up to bradley beal then when he left his teammates that night and said good night you don't think him and Jalen brown were like good night bro see you yeah. later I, exactly that's the same that's thing. they're in the so same locker like, room but then it's cool yeah, for him so, to play but then bradley beal it's not cool for him to play it's it's, a, it's just, it makes it makes no sense. And like another thing, like takes me back to like the Jordan flu game. So like if this shit would have happened in the Jordan flu game, it's just hilarious because it's like there were if everybody if the fans if the players everybody would have seen him on the like barely ready to pass out on the court. There would have been like mayhem of people trying to get out of the stadium and running all around there. Everybody's scared as hell, thinking they're about to die and everything. And it's just like it's nuts because like that's look at the past and like look at now and like look, like what the hell i mean <laughs> it's, it's, it's nuts, nuts. it's it, but, but this is why i'm saying like it's harsh don't get me wrong like i i wouldn't want to be the commissioner that's such a tough place for him but it's almost like the only way is like you have to be that like bad guy at this point because <laughs> that's what's gonna keep the league going because and in reality in my opinion keep it fair i don't think it's fair for the celtics like i don't yeah. think it's fair for them that they have to play without Tatum, but the Sixers are without Embiid and a couple others. And because it's like five people, they're like, all right, we'll postpone your whole game. Yeah. Because if I'm yeah. Tatum, I'd be like, hey, um, how come like, if uh, so three, if three, what's the number? If four of my other teammates get it, now can we cancel our games and salvage the season? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And it's like, it could cost you a loss. Like Jason Tatum is a star player. So him being gone, they got killed by thirty to the Knicks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could make yeah, it can make you lose yeah. a game with him being out. Now a whole game is postponed. You're not getting that L. So you I, I agree with you there. Like it should be an even trade off. Like there should be no number. That's what I'm saying. It shouldn't be like right. The, the reason why I said though with four people, like if they had four people that it would postpone it because that's just like unfair to begin with. Even though that would be kind of fun to watch on TV, I ain't gonna lie. I'd like to watch on TNT to see a yeah, four and five I'd game. I mean, uh, because what happens if that four all of a sudden beat the beat the the whole other team? Like that would be something that's like news. It would be fun to watch probably, but which is entertainment. Why well, that's what everybody wants is entertainment. So why not let that shit happen? So it would be funny, but I do think that like, like you're right. It is like it's unfair to certain teams to postpone certain games and players star players can sit out but their team still has to play and then that costs them wins yeah or maybe like you said no number or maybe a number but that's known and set in stone before it's like hey if it gets to eight players that's the cutoff so it's the same for yeah. everybody i guess i don't know but right now it just seems like it's like dependent you know like if the lakers are out like lebron and anthony davis and uh kuzma and who's another star there is whatever and go soul that i feel like then they postpone the whole game because they're like oh who's gonna watch the backup backup backups play yeah but if it's exactly. another team and it's four guys but they're the back of the bench guys they still play yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> so that's where it makes it unfair but all right well well that's a dilemma that obviously i think will continue it's tough on these comm commissioners i don't like i don't blame them i'm just like obviously like I have my opinion, you have your opinion, everybody does, and that's fair, but it is really tough. And I like I feel sorry for them almost. But yeah. all right, well, anyway, um, do you want to do a free play this week? Or we're I mean, we have just two matchups. I feel like we're getting stuck. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a guessing game at this point. Well, I mean, we got two match. I'll give I'll give one. I don't care. All I'll right, throw one right. out there. This all one's right, gonna so be fun. Chiefs money line. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Easy enough. 
<laughs> I'm going straight up Chiefs money line on this one. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I'm I'm going. I'll take the spread. Chiefs minus three. That's mine too. There you go. There so, you go. There's your free plays. <laughs> there's your free plays, guys. But um, for sure. Well, all right. Well, anyway, now now that football is almost to the end, though. You guys at Linemaker, Linemaker Sports are still rolling. You want to tell us what you guys are covering and stuff? I know NHL's st starting back up. Yeah, NHL started back up. We're actually pretty solid right now. As of right now, we're 7-2 and two at the in NHL that just started out. So that's fun. And we got every sport, honestly. So NFL, even though NFL is coming to an end, you still got college basketball, NBA, NHL. UFC is now playing almost twice a week now. The Dana White wants wants people fighting every single day of the week. So so that's something that's going to be uh, that's continuing to go. And also soccer, that's year round soccer, international soccer that plays throughout the whole year. So nonstop action constantly, as long as nothing gets held up like it was for those five months. Yeah. But hopefully nothing like that happens. And if it doesn't, there's sports going on every day. Awesome. Well, uh, definitely some of our viewers. Uh, if they're not already, uh, should look into Linemaker Sports and check that out. And mm -hmm. uh, if anyone's uh, hiring uh, halftime performers, <laughs> we're over here still training. We're ready. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we will, you know, recap the weekend. Obviously, championship weekend. I'm excited. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll have plenty of storylines to talk about when the weekend ends. And uh, we will see you guys next week.